Hi everybody, this is Warren and welcome to today's video. In this live stream, I'm going to be covering four amazing learning concepts that I have used uh, to, uh, I've applied them to my piano practice routine as well as use them in my private piano lessons. I'm gonna show you why they're so special today, going through each one. And uh, I'm also going to show you what my practice looks like as well as the two apps that I used to completely automate the entire process. And uh, also have this little outline for us to follow along to make it a lot easier. All right. Now, uh, if you enjoy what you watch today and by the end of the video, make sure that you subscribe and like this video because it does help out the algorithm a lot. Um, now, I've also created, we just came out with this, a 23 page PDF that summarizes all the main concepts that you're going to learn in today's video. And you also might find some new suggestions, more suggestions that uh, I might not get to in this video. Now, here's what the cover looks like. Um, if you want this, uh, by the way, if you want to purchase this, it is available at this recording, uh, the time of this recording for $349. But if you sign up for the newsletter, you will receive a discount code in the follow-up email as well as a bunch of free goodies. So that's something I highly suggest you take advantage of. All right. Uh, and also links to resources, and I'll make sure to put timestamps after the live stream is over to, so you can skip over the parts you already know and get to the parts you want to review. And speaking of review, make sure to review this video as many times as you need and get the guide if you want a simple summary because these concepts I've lived with for a very long time. I've studied them really in depth. It's not easy to, to do at first glance, so it's going to take multiple reviews. Um, so yeah, suggest you watch the video again, get the guide. Now, here is what we're going to cover today. We're going to explain who exactly um, this is for, the type of person that you need to be to get the most out of this, the two Anki apps that I use, the differences between them. We're gonna go through the first concept, then the second one, third one, fourth one, and last at the end of the live stream, going to discuss situations where the apps might not work so well and some possible solutions to them. Okay, now, who is this for? Well, if you want better practice sessions, if you wanna get results in half the time you put in, then this is for you. If your time is very limited and you want every minute to count, this is for you. Now, if you're willing to do a lot of planning and organization, not the entire time, but to put the time in upfront because there's a bit of a learning curve and it does take some uh, careful planning in the beginning, then this is for you. <laughs> now, if you don't want to decide what you need to practice, if you just simply want to open up the apps and just start practicing, then this is for you. And also if you are a disciplined and patient person as well. And the reason you need to be disciplined and patient is because the, it would be a mistake to expect short-term results because nearly all the results are going to be in the long term. It might take like a week or more for you to get used to this process and actually see some return on your investment. So I suggest you think of it like the stock market. If you follow the stock market from day to day, it, it kind of goes you know, up and down like a roller coaster. It's crazy. But over time, maybe 10, 20, 30 years, you just see a straight line going up unless there's a crash. <laughs> Knock on wood. All right. Now, a little bit of background about the Anki apps that I use, they originally were for studying and language acquisition. It's a space repetition software. We will talk about that. I will explain that later in the video. So it's not exactly a perfect system for piano. So you're going to have to adapt it to your personal use. And whatever I show you today, uh, you don't need to completely copy it. In fact, I don't think that's a good idea because each person sets it up. It's going to be completely different for the individual. So what I hope is that you use my routine that I share with you today to come up with your own personalized session. Now, there are two types of Anki apps. I'm going to switch these in a second. The first one is a daily app, meaning it's not a spaced repetition software exactly, even though it does have the word Anki in it. Again, more on this later. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I use it for. So let me go ahead and switch on over. Okay, so this is the first app that I use. Now, what you'll see is that they have a bunch of cards which you get to by creating decks, okay? 
Now, what I use it for, this one, is for daily practice. And you can see it's mainly for technique. Here I have arpeggios. Here I have um, thirds and sixths. These are basically my scales. So I like to practice scales in intervals of thirds and intervals of sixths. This has to do with varied practice, which, which is a concept we'll talk about later in the video. I also use it for transposition. So I'll take, just say, with transposition, maybe like a, um, well, I'll, I'll go over these in a second. So transposition is basically taking a harmonic pattern and playing it in every single key. And uh, for I do the same thing with Bach. So I take simple Bach pieces and transpose those into different keys. And last but not least, I have this recording deck, which is basically the app that I use to, it's like, in, in a way, it's like a project management tool as well, because it helps me keep track of all the pieces that I want to record for my other channel. Now, if I go through arpeggios, here, you'll see that there are different scores. However, for this, like going back to the idea of project management is I just use it to keep track of, did I go through every single key for that day? So I don't have to think about it. See, if I just start review, it says B flat major. So I just click the same score for every single one of these. Um, for other ones, if you practice it, the scores help you decide like what you need to practice more and then the easier ones that what you don't need to practice. I'll get into that more a bit later. So I simply just go through each one of these clicking good. So you see it goes through every single key. So I've done, uh, you have to input this as well. So inputting every single key, that, that's the upfront time I was talking about. So I have every major key, every minor key. So I go through all of it, literally everything. You see, I'm not thinking, did I skip one? Did I miss one? It's all there, see that? Same thing with my thirds. Um, going back here, right? So I, and even with thirds, I go one step further, I do melodic minor keys as well as harmonic minor keys. Okay, so there's the thirds, six. Now, if I go to the Bach here, if I click the cards, you can see I do actually have different scores. So this one, I am keeping track. And you see how much it saves time because a fundamental part of effective practice is just working on the stuff that is difficult and not spending time on the things that are easy. So you see here, if I see the key of G and, you know, it could be G major, G minor, C, D, all these are A's. So if I wanted to, I could skip all these and just kind of keep in mind, all right, which ones do I need to practice? Um, these ones are coming up quite nicely. F, B, C, it's at a score of a B. And the things I need to work on are E flat, D sharp, right? Uh, as well as A sharp, P flat major. Okay. So you see it has a you know, C right there. Now, um, going back to transposition, the same thing. I just use this to keep track of all the um, keys that I'm practicing. So no scores there. Now with the recordings, yes, I do scores for these. These really come in handy. I'll probably brush up on this again a little bit later. You see, it helps me keep track of all the songs or pieces that I'm recording for my other YouTube channel. So if it's a score as an A, uh, I can tell myself, oh, this one is about ready to record, okay? So that is it for this first app. Now, um, let me switch to the other app. Now, the other app, is what is called the spaced repetition software. Now, don't worry if it doesn't make sense for you right now. As we go along, as I explained in this video, it's going to make sense for you later, okay? So uh, I'm going to explain exactly what do I use this for. So see for here, I use it for repertoire and the complete repertoire. I'll explain that in a second. So for any Bach pieces I'm working on, for any classical, and I actually um, also have intermediate as well because um, um, these aren't actual like concert level repertoire because if I go down here, here is where I put the concert level rep repertoire. We'll get to that in a second. And miscellaneous is anything that's not classical, like uh, pop music or jazz arrangements, anything in between. Memory here is uh, cards that are, I'm trying to memorize. Okay, um, micro, macro, and then the entire piece. We'll get into that later in the concepts. Again, it will make sense. Here's musicianship. So uh, I have an app that I'm using for ear training. Uh, it's kind of like a reminder of which, um, which, uh, which app to use, like which uh, function of it. It'll make sense uh, when we talk about it later. Some ear training exercises, a fake book that I have, and some soulfish. Definitely not going to sing for you today. 
And here are pieces that I'm actually going to practice. So I make a difference between actually trying to memorize and practice. Because this is a fundamental mistake a lot of beginners make, a lot of newbies. This is a really rookie mistake to avoid. Once you have something memorized, you should not forget to use the material. So this is how I just automate it so I don't have to think about it. And here I have technique, etudes, some jazz licks that I'm working on, some left-hand patterns as well. And then last but not least, I also use it for theory, so music theory as well as harmonic tonal harmony. So a lot of different categories. You see it's like a project management tool. Uh, I don't have to think about anything. So what I'll, all I need to do is input these cards, okay? And I'll also explain how do I know what to practice? Because if I open this up right here, now it just has the title, right? Now here as well. Um, so on, on one sense is the title. I you actually have to. Th this is what I'm talking about with the planning and organization. Because what I do is scan all the material. So you do have to take time to do that. But again, think about it this way. Like let's say five, even 10 minutes, even 20 minutes planning. Is it worth it to you to free up hours and days, even months of time? I think that's an easy trade, right? Now, on one sense, you have to scan it and keep it on your desktop. I'll get to that in a second. In another sense, you can actually directly scan it into the actual software itself. So look at here. See that? So I actually scanned it, and I don't even have to search for it on my computer. It's just right there, and I just play it. Same thing with, let's say, solfege going here, right? So another solfege. Um, so these are just pretty much placeholders, right? Where I have to look at the documents and then see, um, search through my documents and actually get the score out. I'm going to show you in a second, so patience. Um, now with theory, I do the same thing. I scan it directly into the actual app. So it's really cool, really nifty. Okay, now going back. So I scan the documents and I have it in a folder. So uh, and this is you know where you have to be organized. So it, it's basically mimicking the same categories that I have on the Anki app. Okay, if I go a step further, then you can see I have each one here, right, into subcategories. So if I go into the box, I'm not gonna open it up now because. YouTube has like the most ridiculous copyright rules in the world. I don't want to get banned, all right? But I actually scan the entire repertoire. So once I open up this app or of this folder, the, the score is right there. So I look at the app, it tells me to uh, practice this one. Then I go into the document. <laughs> I know this seems like a lot, right? But it really, you get used to it over time. And I go into the actual folder and the repertoire is right there. I just open it up on my computer and I start playing. Same thing with classical music, same thing with all the miscellaneous stuff. It's like an entire library. It's like a Kindle, if you think of it that way. Okay, so that is the basic differences between the apps and what I use it for. Now let's get into the actual concepts themselves. So first concept I'm going to show you is small chunking. What you do is divide your entire workload into manageable segments. The benefits of this is that difficult passages become way easier to locate. Your focus improves because it's a short amount of um, work that you're doing instead of just playing the whole thing. And you can also save time by skipping repetitive sections because pretty much every song, every piece you listen to or practice is repetitive. Here I have an example of a Bach minuet. Now going down here, I, I would actually suggest if it's your first time using this concept and you don't really understand classical music too well, start with songs that you know. Okay, and if you get the guide, I actually show you how to break it down using Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Because if you're using songs and words, it's a lot easier for you to divide it because classical music is not a universal language. It does take time to learn. Now, what we do is divide them into the macro and the micro. So macro are just big sections. So if we're thinking, if like, like a paper, right? We have the intro, the middle, and the end. And the micro is everything uh, on another level. So in the intro, you might split that into three different parts, okay? So going back here, what I wrote for the macro measures one to 17. This is fairly easy because it's just half of the piece. So that's A. Now 17 to the end is going to be B, but you can really uh, label it all you want, well, whatever you want. You can use numbers or you can use letters. I tend to use letters. Now, what you do is actually divide those macro sections even further into the micro. So it's basically, and this one's a lot easier to understand. You just take the half of this uh, piece, 
and then you just half it as well. <laughs> so instead of one to 17, then A1 becomes measures one to what is that, six, seven, eight, nine. And then A2 becomes measure nine to 17. So you see, I have it laid out here. So once again, going to the macro, measures one to 17. B is 17 to 32. And you see, I divided even further. One to nine is A1. And then nine to 17 is A2. Now, same thing with B1 and B2. So I'm gonna show you how I actually input this into the app itself, okay? This might be the most important part of the video. So really review this part carefully. Okay. Now going into the spaced repetition software, and I'm gonna do this live for you. So I would do, uh, so let's say you're just trying to practice it first of all. Right here, go to the macro, you click add a card. You simply label it. So let's say Bach Minuet, something like that. And I can write A. Now you go a step further. If you forget what the actual measures are, this is what I recommend. Cause um, I mean, you get used to that for a while. Like I just know automatically which measures to practice. But again, I've been doing this for years. So you could even just do measures one to 17, right? So you, again, we're doing all these details because when you open it up, so you don't have to think about it or anything. It's just you open it up and you know exactly what to do because that's where people get hung up with practice. They waste too much time deciding and then their concentration starts to get sapped, okay? Now I'm going to just click add. Now, when I go to study it, all right, be custody. All right, I really don't wanna do this, but I guess, <laughs> okay. Um, actually, you know what, let me go back and let's do it at the, no, all right, fine. I will sacrifice for you guys, so. <laughs> now here, Bach Minuet A for measures one to 17. When I open it up, it shows you, should you do it again? Because uh, this is where you actually practice it. And then you have to decide for yourself, like, is it good for that day? Whatever it is, if you play it multiple times, you don't have to get it to perfection. Just think, what is your standard, okay? Then you can click, is it good? Is it hard? Uh, I mean, yeah, good is right here. Is it easy? If it's easy, now, I would actually suggest not clicking on any of these other ones. All I use is actually good, right? But let's say if you click again, go back to it, yeah, then it's still hard, right? So if you click hard, uh, but actually I don't do that. Um, if I need to, I just usually leave it open, right? But let's say it becomes easier to practice, right? I'll click good. And then when I come back to it again, and it's telling me to wait 10 minutes. So try to keep that in mind. I come back to it. Then when I click good, now it's actually entered into the system and you don't need to think about it. It will come back a day later. It will tell you exactly when to practice it, okay? So that's on a macro level. And I'll do the same thing for micro, okay? So if I add another card, when you wet, and this time A1 or A2 or whatever it was, okay? So I'm not gonna enter it in because I already did before. Now here, if I go to repertoire, it's the actual entire piece. So here, I'm just going to write Bach when you wet. So you're actually practicing it on all levels, like the macro, the micro, and then the entire thing. So every level, not even have to think about it. I think that's cool. Okay. Now, if you go back, you can do the same thing for memory because memory is a different way of learning than actual practice. So I would go through and do the same thing with memory. That's literally it. You do this with every single piece. You don't have to decide what to practice. It just automatically tells you when and what to practice. For instance, if I go here, it will go through every single card and I don't have to think about it. It's like, oh, children's song 17. And you know, I know what this is. So again, if you're trying this for the first time, write in specific details so you don't forget, okay? Um, going back to even etudes as well. All right, so that is it for this portion. Let me go back to the outline. Okay. So I hope that makes sense for you. If it does it, I'll make sure to cover these in future live streams and always leave a comment if you want any help with this. Now, second concept is varied practice. It's better to practice in different ways instead of just doing one thing all the time. This is a fundamental mistake a lot of teachers, a lot of students make. They just do one thing the same way a thousand times and they wonder why they hate practice. I usually never practice one way even twice. It's kind of ridiculous, but it does work. So let me explain in a second. Now, uh, it's because doing one thing differently is better than doing it the same way over and over again. And these are all concepts that are field tested. They're scientifically proven 
But of course, you're not going to learn them in school because school is really good at teaching you stuff that's useless. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want some resources on the books that I learned them from, I'll make sure to leave that in links and resources. You'll also get a list of that in the actual guide. Now, an example of this is let's say you're practicing a scale. So instead of just doing a scale the same way over and over and over again, you could try different dynamics, mezzo piano, forte, uh, fortissimo. You can do different rhythms. You can do Let's say whole notes, you can do half note value, you can do quarter notes, you can do 16th, you can do triplets, you can do dotted rhythms. You can even do different articulations, staccato or legato, everything in between. Maybe accenting a uh, first beat or even a second beat. So just doing things multiple different ways. So this is something you can actually start doing immediately. You don't even need to watch the video for the rest of this. Just try to do whatever you're practicing in as many different ways as possible. So this just really depends on creativity. So going back to my technique practice, I showed you that I don't just practice and, you know, starting from the, the same key. I like to do different intervals, mix it up. Okay. Uh, but really when it comes to my actual repertoire, I only practice one different way, which is, which has to do with speed. And this is the app I use. This is actually from the Google play store. Uh, this is why I actually save my Android device because I love this app. They have not made one for the iOS. I wish they would. Okay. So you see here, what makes it so cool is because you can just switch to the different percentages, right? So let's say if I have this at 60 is kind of slow, right? So if I had it at 120, if I click 50%, obviously now it's doing 50% of that speed. So I don't have to even think about, oh, should I practice slow? I just click 50. So 120 becomes 60. And then the next time around, 75% of the speed. So I slowly inch my way up to the target speed, whatever that is. It's really cool. So the way I do this, and this is pretty simple, is this is why you want to have multiple pieces practicing at the same time instead of just working on one thing all the time. So what I do is I open up several pieces. And again, they're scanned. One second, let me take a sip. So if I have like three or four more pieces, I have it all laid out on my laptop. On the first round, whatever the tempos are, I'll go through and I'll practice everything at 50% of the target speed. So that's the first round. The second pass I come around, I go to 75%. So I hope you're getting the picture. The third time around, I go to 85%. And I usually skip the 95% because it's just 5% away from 100, right? And then the last time around, I go to 100%. And that is my practice for the day for those pieces. And my standard is, no matter what happens, when I get 200%, those pieces are done for today, whether I make mistakes or not, okay? So just round up the speed every single time. That's basically it. This is the only varied practice that I really do. Okay, now on to the third important concept, which is interleaving. This is mixing related, but distinct uh, material during sessions. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense, I'll explain in a bit. Your skills transfer to the real world better while you practice for a longer time and you have more fun. This has to do with randomness, which we'll get into at the end of the live session. So this live stream. So I'll explain why randomness is actually a good thing for you. Okay. Now, if this is kind of hard for you to understand, think of it as like one of my favorite activities, which is learning languages, right? So instead of just doing grammar, what you do is you learn grammar, you learn vocabulary, you can also listen to podcasts, you can also watch videos, you can also read books. And what you do is just mix them all together. And so what I, I like to think of it as productive multitasking, okay? So it really helps. It, it's really fun. Like in the beginning, it, it's, it doesn't feel so fun. But once you get used to it, you'll, you'll have so much energy by the end of the day because it's just a much more fun way to practice, okay? So let me show you here. Um, let's go to the first Anki app, the one that is not a space repetition software. Let me show you how you do this. All right, now here, uh, you see I have different categories, right? But if you really wanna take advantage of interleaving is you would just create a new deck and I'll just do this right now. Let's call it interleaving, okay, save it. If I open it up, now I'm going to begin to add cards. How do I add cards? <laughs> here we go. Okay, so add cards. So, it's having as many different categories of whatever you're practicing. So let's see technique and let's just pretend this is technique and it'd be uh, specific with like scale, whatever, right? So there's the first card. Now, 
let's say musicianship in the soul. It could be like Soulfedge or something like that. Okay, and then this is a daily app, by the way. So remember, this doesn't space it out. Now, let's say repertoire, like Bach Minuet. That basically everything, or maybe even theory, you can set up, right? Okay. So what happens is when you start to practice it, all the categories are all mixed in together. So it's really nice. So if I'm practicing repertoire, let's say I'm done with that. And then by the way, scoring yourself so you can keep track of how much practice you need. Okay. Then all oh, now now I do a theory. Okay. Ah, oh, now I do musicianship. Now I do some techniques. Or technique. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically it for interleaving, just mixing it all together. The more you do this, the more effective it is. Okay. Now going back to the other app. So if, with the space repetition software, it's a lot easier because you really don't even need to think about it. Because you see, I have these main categories here, right? So in the subcategories. So if I just specifically wanted to work on Bach, if I specifically want to work on classical music, right? Uh, but let's see if I wanted to do take more advantage of interleaving, I just mix it in all together. So if I click, click complete, then all of these will show up randomly whatever I'm practicing, okay? I'm not gonna go through these because I don't wanna ruin my progress, right? It's the same thing with memory. So if I have a bunch of cards open here, if I just want to just work on it all together at the same time, so whatever card opens up, it'll be either a macro, a micro, or the entire repertoire. Same thing with musicianship. This is really cool, right? Because these are even more different than each other, which is ear training. So whatever I open up, if I click musicianship, but I have cards, if I have cards all here, then it will mix it up all together. So I'll do some ear training with the app, some jazz, some, a fake book, and then some solfege all the way down. Same thing with theory as well. Now, then if you want to take a step further, you can just, what I like to do sometimes just jump around from category to category. Because sometimes you have enough cards to do that. So it's not like you, there's no rules to this. You don't just have to stick with one category and finish all that before moving on to the next. So this is why it's so much fun when you're doing interleaving because what you do is you're giving yourself options. It's like going into an ice cream store. I tell the students this all the time. If you go to an ice cream store, even if it's three flavors, right? Let's say it's only vanilla, chocolate, and I don't know, let's say my favorite, salted sea salted caramel, okay? Uh, there's only three options. That's, that's not much fun. That's why you go to an ice cream store because you have like 24 flavors to choose from or even more. So doing this gives you a lot of options. It might be a little overwhelming in the beginning, but it's just because you're not used to this much freedom when you are practicing. So that is it for interleaving. Back to the outline. Yeah, getting the hang of this. Okay, so that is it for interleaving. So you just have to insert enough cards where, you know, again, for the long term, where you have enough cards to choose from to really take advantage of this concept. Now, the last concept, space repetition. This is practicing or reviewing material through increasing longer, increasingly longer time intervals. What this means is you'll remember something if you're told in three times, if you're told something three times in a row, but you remember it more when you're told in 10 minute intervals. And I'll take it a step further. What really happens is the first time it is simple. Maybe you wait 10 minutes. Okay. Then the next time you could wait 20 minutes. Next time you can wait an hour. Next time you could wait a day. Then it goes to months and even a year. Okay. So let me show you. And this is by far the one you don't really have to think about because space repetition software. Remember I mentioned that earlier, this app just automatically does it for you. So going back to the space Anki app. Okay. So let me demonstrate with a couple of these cards, uh, any one of these, right? So the longer you work on a card, the more you're going to have to wait. So if I go down here, pretty sure. Okay, so it's, I'm working on house, moving castle. You see here, I have the measures 230 to the end to see how specific I am with this one. If I click show answer, see this? So when I practice it, and when it's, you know, when I do enough practice, I just click hard. So the next time I'm going to practice this will be five and a half months later. So this app automatically figures out the ideal waiting period for you. But remember, again, it's not exactly tailored for piano practice, so you kind of have to adjust. Okay, whatever label, level you're at. By the way, I hardly click, I actually don't ever click any of the other cards. I don't click good, I don't click easy because it's too far in the future. So all I use is just hard. So every time I get to it, I just click hard, okay? Let's go to another one. So if you're going down to, let's say music theory, let's see how long I have to wait for this one. So if I'm doing this, okay, what is the answer here? 
So use it for study. Look at this, 1.7 years, okay? Now, I don't have any memory uh, app cards available, but some of these actually I've seen where I've been able to memorize pieces by only playing them, you know, the further you go along. I mean, in the beginning, you have to do more constantly because it's getting into your memory. So the periods of waiting are not as long. But some of these cards, literally, I only have to work on memory once a year, maybe even once every two or three years. It's ridiculous. Like it, it, it works. It's crazy. Okay. So imagine that. Imagine that you're practicing and then you don't have to work on a piece until like the next year, but you're not going to forget about it because it's all in the app. It's going to show up to you at the perfect time without even thinking about it. See why I'm, I'm I'm excited about this stuff. I've, it's the best decision I ever made in my entire life. Okay, so that is it for the last uh, for the last uh, concept. Let's go back to our outline. Yeah, so that is it basically for the video. Now, what I want to talk about are the potential problems that you're going to run into and the solutions to them. And I don't see any comments in the live, so if you do have some questions at this point put them in. Otherwise, I'm going to end it after we discuss this last part. So it's not perfect system for piano, like I originally mentioned. It's originally language acquisition for studying. It's really not good for short-term deadlines, uh, especially the, the space repetition Anki. And if you don't like randomness, <laughs> this is something you just have to get over. Other thing too, is you can't always complete all cards within a day. For instance, if I take the weekend off, or let's say worst case scenario, if I go on a vacation, sometimes this is why I hate going on vacation. So if I go on a vacation for like a week or two weeks later, if I come back to the app, there's gonna be a lot of cards, a lot of repertoire materials that I have to get through, okay? What are the solutions to those? Well, again, it's just to realize that it's not a perfect system. You can try resetting the cards, although that's not what I really use too often. I just keep it, you know, um, what I'll do, let's say, before, again, I only click the option hard, right? But let's say I wanna get some more practice in, then I'll just make a mental note or I manually input it, let's say in a, in a notebook, or let's say I make a note of it to just practice this one more. So this is what I, you know, some additional tools you use outside of the actual Anki app. It's just like a simple notepad, okay? So like practice this more, okay? Um, so that's what I'll do. And I'll, I'll drill it more until I'm comfortable enough to let it go. Now for the short term, um, the recording app. So remember that, let's go back to that. This is what I use for short-term um, projects, the ones that I really need to get done as soon as possible. So if I go back to this app, again, going back to, let's say, recording, right? So this is cool because when I hit review, I can go, so this is, this is a daily app, it doesn't wait. I can go through these as many times as I want. So if I want to really practice all the pieces, I want to spend an entire hour practicing it, then I can do so. So just over and over again, basically drilling it. So this is what I use for short-term um, projects that I want to record as soon as possible, okay? All right, going back, almost done here. Hope you guys have enjoyed what you've learned so far. All right, so that's for short-term. Now, one thing with randomness is to realize actually the more random that you can make your life, <laughs> as bad as it sounds, the better. Randomness is good for you. The problem is everyone wants to predict everything, put it in a box, have like, you know, this, this is the problem with learning in school. They think you should have a perfect solution and procedure, know exactly the answer to everything in life. And that is not the truth. The reason why randomness is good uh, has to do with the concepts of interleaving and space repetition, right? So you don't really know what you're going to practice, but you know you're going to get everything done. And this is more useful for the real world. For example, uh, when I used to work as an accompanist and my wife is a professional accompanist right now, most people are not professional, okay? Let me tell you that. So what that means is you'll get projects thrown at you last second. You won't know what you need to work on. So that's how the real world works. Although from a day to day, you can generally expect what your day is gonna look like, but I'm sure that you've had moments, situations in your life where something really threw you off because you weren't expecting it. So my motto in life is just to expect the worst, prepare for the best, just expect the unexpected. Randomness is good for you. And it has to do with this concept, another concept called transfer, that the more random you make your practice, the more it actually translates better 
to the real world. So if you have a, let's say a recital coming up, the more you use this, these apps and make it as random as possible, the better your performance is going to be. Because I'm sure you've had some situations before in life where you've practiced something over and over and over and over and over again. And you tell yourself you got this. Then you go play it and it's a train wreck. It's because we're not used to these concepts. The more random you make it, the more better performances, the better your skills will translate to the real world. Now, with the cards, you just have to <laughs> you just have to pick and choose your battles. And this, I admit, this is one thing that bothered me a lot, is not getting all the cards done. So when I saw like, oh, I still have some things I need to complete, it's kind of like my to-do list. If I have some tasks in my to-do list, at first it caused me a lot of anxiety, which is why I shut off all notifications on your cell phone as well. But it's just to realize you're not going to complete everything in the entire day. Just pick and choose which ones you're going to finish. And then at the end of the day, whatever's left over is whatever's left over. And remember, though, if you keep going to it, it's still going to be there and you're going to get to it. At least that will give you some comfort that you're going to finish it because it's there. You're not going to have to forget about it because the app remembers everything for you. Okay. All right. Well, that is it for today's video. If you have any questions, let me know before I end this uh, live stream. But I really want to thank you for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe, like this video because it really helps this channel a lot. Leave some questions in the comment below because I plan on doing more future live streams. Whatever topics you want me to cover, I'm just open to it all. I want to help you guys as much as possible. Whether you have more questions about what you learned today in these concepts, if you want me to go more in detail, where do you have questions about piano, like how to practice effectively, how to set up a routine, uh, let's say plan your sessions, okay? Maybe even like how to read notes, how to practice rhythm, what resources to use, yada, 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 okay? And last but not least, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, I, I do quite a bit of writing. You can see how I build up blog posts from the bottom up, as well as getting free goodies. You'll get a bunch of free guides as well as the discount code for today's guide, the four practice piano concepts for really good results. So make sure if you want a discount for that to sign up for the newsletter, you'll get that in a follow-up email. And last but not least, happy practicing. I just realized today is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the amazing dads out in the world. If you're a father yourself, happy Father's Day to you. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you next time. Happy practicing.